Welcome, Governor Jesse Ventura. Thank you for being on the show. We really appreciate it. Great to be here. Always good to be on RT. Now, uh, you've just announced you're running for president. Congratulations. What's that like? I'm not running for president. <laughs> Who announced that nonsense? I, I, I'll tell you this. If I were going to announce, it won't be until next June if, if I do do it, because you have to look at it logically. Those that uh -huh. announce today start spending money today. It's wasteful spending. It's worthless spending. And if you'll look at my record when I ran for governor, I only raised $300,000 to become the governor of the state of Minnesota. Which was incredible, so, yeah. Well, to me, the money ain't the important thing. It's the timing. And it's far too early right now. I would never announce you, my candidacy now. Do you think, but do you think the establishment, the ruling elite, would they ever allow a man such as yourself, meaning a tie-dyed American, to be president? Or would they use their money and control the mainstream media to simply make sure another one of their vipers gets in? Well, I'm sure they will try to keep their vipers in. There's no doubt about it. But you have to catch them at the wrong time, make your timing correct. And ultimately, unless the election is fixed, ultimately the people decide by voting. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, the power brokers can't control the people. You know, the people ultimately make that decision to the best of my knowledge. Yeah. And as long, as long as that freedom remains there and the vote remains what it is, the, you know, they're setting the table for me, if you look at it logically. They truly are. Because the last election, they only had 64 percent didn't vote. Those are 64 potential of my voters if I were to run. Yeah, That's a majority, yeah. isn't it? That's yeah, and you and you mentioned the, that you only were you only had to spend three hundred thousand, which was incredible to to win uh, in Minnesota. Do, what are your thoughts on money in politics? Is it controlling the game? Well, it it certainly is to a certain level, and the mentality of the American people is allowing it to do that. Mm -hmm. They need to get away from watching these stupid ads on TV. I mean, when you watch them, they're insulting. I mean, if you watch them closely, the opponent should be put in jail, shouldn't he? <laughs> you know, I mean, you'd, you'd think the opponent's a criminal who's out on, you know, yeah. boycotting his bail and running around committing crimes all over the country. And so people need to truly get beyond that and start looking at truly what issues are important to them. And for me, it's anti-war. I yeah. am tired of these wars and I want out of them now. Yeah, yeah, that's obviously one of the biggest uh, biggest problems facing this country is that we seem to go to war constantly. We have a thousand military bases around the world. Um, what, what's your take on what, you, what just went down in Iran, the Iran deal? And if I mean, could we just send you over there to handle it with your with bare fisted? Could you just do that for us? No, you know, it, it, diplomacy is what it is. It's called diplomacy, but it, it should be used to the full extent of it. Let's look at it this way. War is the failure of politicians. When war happens, it's because politicians have failed to do their job. Right. They have failed diplomatically. They have failed miserably. So if you look at the United States through the course of the last 50 years, our politicians have failed miserably because that's all we've been is at war for the last 50 years. And like I said, that's failure of politics when the ultimate result is war. So any talking is good. Any talking is better than bombing. You... It's better than conflict. So if, if Iran, the whole nuclear thing there, they need to keep the door open. They need to keep talking. They need to keep working on it. Why does there have to be deadlines for things like that? To me, deadlines, that's political. When you start setting deadlines that something must happen within a certain time or else. If you that puts did... you under the clock. If you did run, I'm wondering what which party you would run with, because you said you want you've said you want to get rid of political <laughs> parties, abolish them. Maybe you could run with Schwarzenegger as an all predator party. Is that possible? No, because he wasn't born in the United States, so he's ineligible. Ah, okay. <laughs> uh, Arnold Arnold took an oath to the Austrian army. I don't want anyone who took an oath to another army to be the head of our country. Fair enough. You know, I don't I don't care when you did it. But uh, no, I wouldn't run with either political party. Absolutely not. In fact, that would be the essence of my campaign if I were to run. The essence of my campaign would be simple. 
I would give the American people the opportunity to create history with me and elect the first president, the first president since George Washington, the father of the country, who does not belong to a political party. And that's what I would challenge the American people to do. But on the flip side, you'd have to be open and you'd have to get a, a, some type of consent from the two parties stating that if they were to elect me, how would they punish the American people? Because rest <laughs> assured, the Democrats and Republicans would punish the people if they elected an independent like me. All right, we're, we're going to do a bit of a lightning round. I'm going to list people, and you say whether you would run with them as your VP. So uh, first up, Jill Stein. What do you think? Who? Jill Stein, the Green Party. I don't even know her. If she, you know, I have no idea. I, you know, remember, I've been off the grid a couple years. I'm not paying attention to who's running for all the parties <laughs> in America. And not only that, you guys in the media ought to be chastised. It's not even election year. And I'm, you're not, talking I, I'm about not the, the president. I'm not the media. I'm a goon. So. Well, then you're going to get it too. You know, <laughs> all right. I'm give you right, some I'll, off the grid here. Fair, you know, fair. why are we talking about the presidency when it's not even the election year? I agree. I agree. Let's move you to know, something. You know, that's why it cost. That's why it costs so much money because you guys in the media start harping on it two years before it happens. I agree. Let's change subjects. Uh, a, while All right. back, a while back, you sued the TSA for illegal searches of passengers. And I don't understand why you won't just bend over and accept your freedom like a good American. Well, because uh, I feel that they violate my Fourth Amendment reasonable search and seizure. It's not reasonable to believe Jesse Ventura is a threat. I'm an honorably discharged Navy veteran. I've been flying for 30 years. I'm a former mayor and a former governor. How do I pose a threat? But it begs the bigger question, and here's the bigger question. The airlines are private sector businesses. Why is it the government's job to provide security for a private sector business? Let the airlines provide their own security. Then I could have a relationship with an airline and I could go to an airport and not be searched at all because I'd have a relationship with that business and they'd know who I was, wouldn't they? Absolutely. I don't know that you're not a threat. I mean, I'm a little scared of you, but uh, other than that, I, I hear your point. <laughs> I, you've been, uh, you, you're great at having incredible opinions, strong opinions on a lot of things. I'm going to throw a quick pop culture question at you. American Sniper, good movie or bad movie? I haven't seen it, but if it's anything like the book, it's a bad movie. It's a propaganda movie. It's shameful. It's shameful that Kyle would take a veteran like me from Vietnam, throw me under the bus for money and yeah. fame because that's exactly what he did. And, I, and, and when I was in the service, we had a standard rule. It was the Las Vegas rule. What's, what happens in Vegas stays in Vegas. What happens on deployment stays on deployment. But apparently they don't honor that rule anymore. Now they come home and write books about it and attempt to get rich off other people because of it. Fair enough. Uh, final question, I'll leave you with this. Is my show your favorite show on RT America or uh, other than your son's, yours, and maybe Larry King's? Well, that puts you fourth already. <laughs> I better not answer. <laughs> I appreciate it, Jesse. Thank you for joining us. All right, thank you. Look forward to doing it again. All right.